Hey everyone, it's Connor from Coifin here. Coifin recently added some long-awaited data series to the platform, Return on Invested Capital, NOPAT, and Invested Capital. Today, I want to walk you through our calculation methodology, where you can utilize this data across Coifin and some of the considerations. For those who are not aware, ROIC, or Return on Invested Capital, is a profitability ratio that gauges how well a company generates earnings from its invested capital. It's an essential indicator because it provides insight in two critical areas. Operational efficiency. ROIC tells us how good a company is at turning capital into profits. High ROIC values indicate that a company is using its invested capital effectively to generate those earnings, reflecting strong operational performance. Value creation is crucial for investors because it shows whether a company is creating value. When ROIC exceeds the company's cost of capital, it indicates that the firm is generating more profit than it costs to fund its operations and growth, which typically leads to value creation for shareholders. ROIC is therefore important as it evaluates the performance of a company's management in deploying capital and helps in comparing the efficiency of companies across industries, regardless of their financial structures. As I mentioned, Coifin now provides data on ROIC, NOPAT, and invested capital, the three variables related to that data series, as well as average invested capital. This data is available today in watch list, charts, the financial analysis section, and the market scatter chart. We plan to include it in other areas of Coifin, such as the screener and percentile rank segments, as well as introduce modified variations of the series, such as return on incremental invested capital and multi-year averages. Beginning with watch lists, you can now pull these data series as you would with any other data series from the column picker. You can see here that I have ROIC for the financial year, NOPAT, invested capital, and average invested capital. This is an S&P watch list, and I've broken it out, grouped it by industry. So we have software here, we have technology, we have semis. And if you wanted to find these, you would go to the column picker, you would type in ROIC, and then you would have a few options there. For charts like this one that I showed you at the beginning, it's a similar process. You just go into the data series picker for a security that you selected on, type in ROIC, no pattern invested capital, and you'll be able to chart those on a time series across the Coifin graphic tool. You can also use these data series for a company comparison. So if I type in Microsoft here, I can also pull up its return invested capital on a time series basis. I can turn these into area charts if I want. I could do all the regular formatting that you'll be used to in Coifin. In the financial analysis section, I'm gonna be able to create templates to incorporate this ROIC data as well. If I go down here into this master view template that I've created, we're filtered on Apple right now. This just breaks out the income statement into a bit more granularity. If I wanna add an extra data series to this, I can go into the column picker, type in return on invested capital, and it's gonna pull those up for me. And I can move this up to the top if I want. Alternatively, you could build something within a template that looks like this, an ROIC template where you add in all the components of ROIC as well as the NOPAT, the invested capital, and the return on invested capital as well. And if we head over to the market scatter chart, you're going to be able to use these data series to compare on an X and Y basis the relationship between those two variables. You can see here that I have it set up for the S&P core. You can also choose other indices, constituents from ETFs, or securities from your watch list. Here you have the pickers for the X and Y axis. Similarly to everywhere else on Coifin, you can go in here and search for the data series and then add it in there. And now you can see this chart gives me the breakdown of ROIC and NOPAT. And on the right-hand side, I'm going to have all of that itemized in this table, which I can download as well. To round things off, I thought this would be a great moment to break down how we chose to calculate ROIC which you can find in this help desk article that I will link in the description. Unlike measures such as gross margin, ROIC does not have a single source of truth when it comes to calculation methodology. If we take free cash flow margin as an example, traditionally this is calculated as free cash flow divided by revenue and expressed as a percentage. However, some investors like to adjust this metric for stock-based compensation. So despite there being a commonly used method, there is nuance. ROIC is similar and many terminals differ in their approach to calculation. Some use net income in place of NOPAT, which we felt was erroneous. Others use return on capital employed as a substitute for ROIC, which again is not appropriate. So we chose our method because it focused on operating profit generated from invested capital. This article breaks down all the areas that you can use ROIC in. 
throughout Coifin, but it also breaks down the calculation as well. Our methodology is NOPAT divided by average invested capital, where NOPAT is EBIT less income tax expense. Invested capital is long-term and short-term debt plus equity plus current and long-term leases. Average invested capital is then the invested capital from year zero plus year minus one divided by two. If we break down how this calculation works for Microsoft in the year 2023, you can read that in your own time. And after we put all of those inputs in, we get an ROIC in 2023 as 26%. We also have a section here dedicated to considerations of using this methodology. One of the most common adjustments to ROIC, for example, which has gained popularity in recent decades thanks to the shift in composition of intangible assets on company balance sheet, is adjusting for intangibles. Those familiar with Michael Mobison and Dan Callahan will appreciate that calculating ROIC in such a way requires nuance to adjust for these intangibles and is performed on a company by company basis. Some calculations require a human touch to decipher between operating and non-operating assets and adjustments for one-off items. This is sadly not possible when creating a data series that's gonna be applied to a library of a thousand global stocks. However, for those interested in learning more about adjustments to ROIC, Mobison and Callahan have a great body of work, a number of papers on the Consilient Observer, where you can read about the data series itself, how it's impacted by adjustments for intangibles, and the influence of ROIC on shareholder return. Inside of Coifin today, we have custom formulas which allow individuals to use existing data series and construct their own. But if you are looking to adjust the ROIC to your needs or the specific company, you can do so. And eventually in the future, we're going to allow custom formulas to be charted, screened for, and shown on a time series basis. However, for now, that sums up this video. We're super excited to introduce this data series to Coifin. We hope you find it useful. As always, you can reach out to us at Coifin Charts over on Twitter. The help desk is help at coifin.com. You are more than welcome to drop a comment in the comment section below. Thank you.